Alright, so I suppose we need to talk about the Game Awards. This article is from Polygon, which is, in general, a fairly left-wing, progressive outlet along the lines of Kotaku, and, in general, game journalism sites. Now, I will say, the one big snub that people are talking about is Dragon Age, Veilguard, and while it is not the thing that gamers are talking about, that is the inclusion of DLC, remakes, and expansions into the just normal categories for Game of the Year, or anything else for that matter, the thing that people are attempting to sell to you is that Dragon Age of the Valgard is not a bad game. It is not a game that has failed. It is not a representation and an example of the decline of Bioware as an RPG studio. It is actually just... Mm, it's unfortunate. Now, they do this in a couple of interesting, sneaky ways. One of which is to compare it to Black Myth Wukong. I've seen this in a couple articles. Another one was on Kotaku, which is to say that Black Myth Wukong, really shocking, shocking it made it into the Game of the Year nominations. Why? It's on Metacritic. Didn't you know on Metacritic? Veilguard has a higher score. It's 82. Black Myth Wukong's 81. Black Myth Wukong... Uh, doesn't that mean that Black Myth Wukong is worse than Dragon Age the Veilguard? This is gaslighting on an epic scale, I must admit. Because you would have to believe that... Black Myth Wukong, all the news that you remember hearing about it, how it was politically charged and there were accusations of mm, sexism and racism and, well, this studio is really not up on things. They don't really know what's going on here. Uh, that that had no impact on scores amongst game critics, and journalist outlets. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hogwarts Legacy definitely didn't get review-bombed at its start. There's no way that didn't happen. No. No, that, that definitely didn't happen. Same thing with Black Myth Wukong. There's no way that the sites that average critic scores would have any... There's no way, there's no possibility that that political scandal somehow impacted the scores that game journalistic websites gave the game. No. No. Of course, if you were to look at, you know, other places that take audience scores. Black Myth Wukong is overwhelmingly positive in all of these places, you know. Scores easily would be in the 90% positive. Veilguard would, on the other hand, be probably significantly lower. A failing grade by most people's standards. And yet... These outlets have the gall to suggest that the Game Awards snubbed Veilguard. The only category they got nominated in was in Best Innovation in Accessibility. And I've heard that that's a very important category. I don't know. Generally speaking, when I look at accessibility in a game, it means things like colorblindness, options, 
options for if you're, you know, you're paralyzed. You have no, you know, you don't have fingers. You don't have the ability to play games. You're, you're playing it with your eyes on some neural link technology. That is, generally speaking, accessibility options in a video game. I don't think that's what they meant in the Game Awards, though. I'm assuming that is the, it's the most politically progressive, accessible to all people, and they're able to see themselves in a lot of characters. Okay, fine, I suppose. But to make it seem like that's an important category is ridiculous. However, again, we would have... You even have to go in further here with this. More tellingly, though, the Veil Guard did not score nominations for Best Narrative or Best Performance, two areas where Bioware games tend to excel, and which are less review-dependent, as if the reviews matter about how good a game is. It doesn't, of course not. It also missed out on Best Role-Playing Game, perhaps because everyone is aware that this game is actually not really that good. I think I've heard a couple people that are generally critical of the game praise, hmm, the combat's pretty good. After a certain number of hours in the game, the combat becomes pretty interesting. But the story, narrative, the role-playing aspects of it, that's kind of usually missing. I don't know anything about this story. I've not heard anything about it. So clearly it's not so incredibly good that it captured the imagination of all these people that are singing its praises. They're not telling me anything about it. So I don't think it matters. I don't think it's that good. Best performance is an interesting one because certainly Bioware could be hiring incredibly talented voice actors to perform a role and they'll do it a, they'll do a great job but in the same way that the Oscars don't recognize actors without a convincingly appropriate role a role that is worthy of the best performance if your story the writing is not good no matter how good the actor is, they can't turn, you know, you can't sew a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You can only polish a turd. And it seems that this game is a turd. Maybe I'm wrong. Please let me know if I'm wrong. Tell me if this game is actually fantastic and worthy of my time. And I will consider giving it a go. But... To be honest, I'm not that interested. I'm just not that interested. Especially when you consider the fact that the last game was 10 years ago. It took you 10 years. Rockstar released a game before you did. Almost two. But this is the game that you came out with? You had all the time in the world... And this is what you came up with. I just can't help but thinking that this game's probably not that good. And it's probably going to fail. And it's probably right that it fails. So why did it... Why is it a snub? Why is it a snub when this game does not get ushered in to the hallowed halls of the Game Awards? It's not a snub. It's an honest reflection of, you know what? I don't think anyone would have bought it if we put Dragon Age in here. We kicked out Dragon's Dogma 2 or Metaphor Refantasio, any of these other games. I, I don't think anyone would buy the stuff that we're selling. If we kicked out these games that are inarguably, objectively better and put it in. They already think we're full of it. If we keep proving them right, we 
push ourselves into irrelevancy. We doom ourselves to probably losing our jobs. And we don't want that. Now, of course, the issue that gamers are talking about for this, which I suppose I could make an entire video on, but it's the inclusion of DLCs, remakes, expansions, and so on, into general categories. Shadow of the Earth Tree, up for Game of the Year. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, up for Game of the Year. It's not in its own specific category of DLC, remakes, expansions. I don't have a huge problem with it. In this specific scenario, I think both of these games are essentially new games. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, yes, I understand Final Fantasy VII is an old game. Both Remake and Rebirth share almost nothing except for the names of the characters with Final Fantasy VII. There is almost no overlap. If you were to look at the story of Final Fantasy VII, what happens in Final Fantasy VII versus Remake? It's, it's completely different. It's really significantly different. The systems are different. Everything is different. Shadow of the Erd Tree, realistically, the amount of game that is in there is probably enough to be a slightly lackluster sequel. You could have easily called this Elden Ring 2, but it has such tight connections with the base game, with Elden Ring, that they said, you know what, we'll release it as an expansion as opposed to its own specific title. Especially because my guess would be if they do, and I'm sure they will, do an Elden Ring 2, it's going to follow the same pattern as Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, which is to say the cosmology of the universe will be significantly different. It will be decades, years, centuries, millennia into the future, and there will be very little direct story connections between Elden Ring and Elden Ring 2. It will be in the same general world, but only in the same sense that, uh, like, Mistborn the Final Empire and Mistborn the Alloy of Law are, which is to say the general physics of the universe is the same, but the setting is essentially totally different. Could be that in the future this will come back to bite them, where you will have DLCs that are very good, but do not really merit inclusion in the game of the year. And they might lose some people there. But to be honest, my guess is the game awards are inherently a remnant of a dying age of, you know, G4 TV and so on and so forth, where what you don't have any large streamer could easily pull in more viewers than the Game Awards could ever hope to, which is of course why they're trying to trademark the Game Awards, which is ridiculous. But it's to, you know, it's to, it's to gatekeep. It's to try to keep people who are not in the know, not part of the right crowd, out of defining the conversation on what makes a good game. So, let me know your thoughts. Thank you for your time and attention. Good luck in all your endeavors. And I shall say farewell for now.